Hello, I'm Malcolm Hazlitt. And I'm Janice Baker. How well do you know the suburb that you live in? Well, do you know its history and do you know where today's generation fit in? That and, yes, and our old friend Kimberly is back with us. With some great advice on health. Next on Our Time. Do you know the suburb you live in? Yeah, I do. Well, my car does because it just finds its way home. No. You know, I've been driving one of those intelligent cars for years. But you'd know. <laughs> you have lived in that area for some I've time. lived, yes, actually I have. It's funny you should say that. I know more about Longwood, where I was brought up as a kid probably, than mm. I do of my own suburb. Right. And we're actually going to talk to Matthew Ives from the city of Unley about an incentive that's really been set up to discover where people live or find out who lived there before. Mal uh, Malcolm. I'm Malcolm. He's well, Matthew. I'm Matthew. Welcome, Matthew. Matthew. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. Welcome back, I should say. Oh, yes, you have thank been you. on our program before. We talked yeah. about art before. We did. We talked about Sala in Unley, but we can talk about what we're doing about history in Unley. Yes. So we've done something a little bit different as part of our public art strategy. We've decided to come up with some apps. So. Apps. apps. So here's the, <laughs> Not the, the this wonderful world now that we work yes. in with the mobile phones. Mm -hmm. There are so many different apps. There are so many different apps. Now. And so what we've done is that we've discovered that we can actually use some apps to tell you the stories of the history of Goodwood. And we've done it also for Unley right. as well. So we've got an app which is called Discover Historic Goodwood. Yes. We've got another one which is called Discover Historic Unley. Has anybody else done this around the country? I think that they have, but we believe that we're the first ones that have done this in this particular area. We mm -hmm. were lucky enough that we managed to find the technology which was fairly low budget. Mm. It meant that we were actually be able to gather the stories, not just historically, but we also had a bit of fun. We worked with a fabulous organisation called Open Space Contemporary Arts who went down and gathered the stories on Goodwood Road of people who would tell stories from the 1960s or the 1970s or what they knew of a place mm -hmm. like the Goodwood Institute, mm -hmm. you know, when That's been Goodwood around for a while. Which has been around for ages, yeah. but yes, they would yeah. tell stories about when it was a nightclub. Oh, really? In the 1960s. <laughs> Did oh, you go I'm there, Malcolm? Old. No. No, I never went there. You went to the nightclub? So it was no. a nightclub in the 1960s and right. Glenn Sherrick and all those kind of people who used no, see, to... See, I was at the Wonderland then, sitting uh, at the Wonderland. Just down the road? Just up the road. Up the road. Yes, always higher up. Higher up the road. <laughs> and, and so what we did was that we gathered those stories, and but also we wanted to gather the stories of urban myths. Right. Were they true? Were so there's stories that we've got of To Lose the Dog. To Lose the Dog was owned by nobody, but used to go around from house to house. Jesus. There was a performer who used oh, to be no. at the Goodwood Hotel has said that he was of Pacific nation. I didn't know if he was female or whether he was male, but he would entertain people. Right. There was Doing what? Well, he would do... Performances. Performances. Dancing. Well, that looks Hawaiian, do you think? Things, no. that, things well, that people had never seen before in Goodwood. Play the oh, ukulele, okay. that would be... Would that be? No, that's Hawaiian too. No. A bit off. <laughs> These, here's some of the pictures, Matthew, of some of the... Um, so yes, we've got, when you go on the tour, so you, you have an app, Janice, you yes. have an app. Yes. You set it up, up on your phone, phone and you have a, a starting point. Yes. And what you'll do is that the phone, you'll start it off and as you move with the phone, it's smart technology, what happens is that it will bring up the photographs like this and there'll be a bit of text that will tell you a story about the place that you are. Right. As you move, you'll set off a story. So as you're moving between the various historic sites, we've got 14 of them yes. along Goodwood Road that you can go to, you'll listen to one of these stories that, that the, the local institute. people... So there's the Institute, that, yeah. then yeah. I think we've got the... That's the might be the post office there that we're looking at. Yes. There's the police station. We've got various churches along the way. There's the Goody Hotel, yeah. for example. Yeah. Famous hotel, yeah. And so what's happened is, is and then there's also the traders and the way that the shops. There's a there's a, a butcher's that's on the list that has a sad story. The Capri that everybody would Love. know. Do you the, know, yeah. and that was originally called the Star Theatre, believe it or it not. It was. Yes. It which was. Is my which theater is now. your yeah. theatre? Not, not that theatre, but. So there is a story that we tell one of mm. the stories that we tell of Bob the Usher. And Bob the Usher passed away not so long ago. And Bob the Usher, as you well know, at the Capri Cinema, they have some very you know, magnificent kind of uniforms that they yes, can they wear. Yes, they do. Don't but, they, Jackson? And Jackson uh, knows that. Yes, so, ja Jackson does. And what happens is that Bob the Usher, what happens is, is that the 
Bob had one of these uniforms and he passed away. And uh, he actually requested, could he be buried? In the uniform? In the uniform. Oh, really? And the Capri so, granted that. Oh. See, isn't that the truth, though? How little we know about where we live. Mm. You know, because you buy into a place at some point in your life. You don't really know who's been there before unless you look back at the title. Mm. Uh, you don't necessarily know the history of what was there. Um, where I live, there used to be, because I lived around the corner for a while from where I live now, there used to be um, an almond orchard. And the, the house was just a little timber frame covered with corrugated iron house with an almond orchard. Now, all of that's gone. And the people who, the, the woman who lived there as a child lived a couple of doors down the road. She's gone now. So that history has completely gone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's nobody living in the street that remembers that but me. But you. But I'm going to live forever, so I'll <laughs> pass it on. But it's interesting also to find out why suburbs are called suburbs. I mean, just mm. down the road from Goodwood, we've got Black Forest. Yes. Why is it Black Forest? Well, the reason it was called Black Forest is before the Europeans completely you know, chopped took down over. all of the trees and took things down. Apparently, that was one of the densest areas that you could see. So it oh, was black known. wood. Was it black wood? No, this was black forest. Yeah, no, but Did was you? it black wood? The it wood was, that was I, I, No, in the I think it was more about the density oh, okay. of the forest that was there before yeah. settlement because came the, and they started to. Well, there you know, is sell there is a native tree called black wood. Oh, well, there you go. You've a black wood tree at Black Forest. That's what I always thought it was named after. Uh -huh. That'd be interesting to clear up. So who did the apps for you and, and the design work and things that are... So look, I'll let you in on a secret, yes. only on television, yes. is that we managed to find that um, a, a free software with free maintenance, and I'll give a little plug. So if you want to see these apps, it's on a thing called Easy Travel, I-Z-I dot travel. And if you go to that, there are various guides around South Australia. So around the corner, for example, there's a tour that you can do of Glenside mm -hmm. as well, where you can do a walk. And so we managed to get this technology, and then what you do is you download the information on there, the photographs, the text, the sound, mm. and you can create an app. And so we're going to do more of this. So in fact, down Goodwood Road, we've actually got a tour that you can do of all of the various artworks that we did recently as part of the streetscaping there. Right. Last year we did a, we did a Sala in Unley app. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as you can go to the app and you can have a look around you and even had, choose the ones that you can have. You had art on your rubbish bins. And we had art on our rubbish bins as oh. well. And there's some of, on still some of the bins as well. I was going to say though, where, how do you choose a suburb? Because we do have mm. some really um, historical suburbs. Well, like, you live in one to start well, with. Norwood. Where too. are you? Well, I'm in Dulwich. Well, well, obviously, and so what happens is, is that hopefully in your areas, I mean, we're very lucky that we've got the Unley Museum. Mm. So the Unley Museum is one of the few local government-run museums with a fabulous set of volunteers called the Friends of the Museum as well. Yeah. And so what happens is, is that they'll target areas that have obviously got that kind of density of history. Mm. So we've got the other one, which is, you know, we set this up in... in 2014, we set up a walking trail which was called Discover Historic Unley. Yeah. And that was one you could go around and you can use a QR code and you could get a little bit more information. Again, oh, okay. you put the phone up, you mm. use the QR code mm. and you could get more information and we've expanded that. We know that there's un in, un in Unley Park, but that would be a good one to do, perhaps some of the larger houses and it would tell yes. the stories of the homesteads yes. that they used to be. You Campbelltown's know, another one. There's lots of history in Campbelltown. Particularly right. in Italian history. Well, that's the, it. That's yes. right. And then, of course, you could. You could tell it from what you, whichever perspective you wanted to. Like with Goodwood's got a very strong tradition with the Greek community. Yes. yes. And yeah. also, of course, the showgrounds are there, which is quite which is, important. Which is, so state. when we did the app, we deliberately, I have to say, we deliberately avoided the showgrounds because that's a whole, you know, you could do a whole you app. You could. You know, right. you could just, just move around because you can and go... And for anyone who's watching us in any other state and thinking, well, where are these places they're talking about? Uh, come to Adelaide and find out. It's always <laughs> a good way to find yes. out. But the reality is maybe go talk to your council if it doesn't exist in your state and just see if they have any interest in doing that and you could contact even Matthew at the yes. only council here in South Australia and I'm sure yes. you put, put mm. them in the right direction. Yes. I think, um, Matthew, a, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about... We were talking to a to uh, Jane Donovan about a dating situation where they weren't using apps anymore or screen time. They were actually meeting people face to face. In a funny sort of way, this is like falling in love with your suburb mm. or finding a suburb to fall in love with again, yep. as she was talking about face to face people meeting. Because um, 
it, just talking about where I live, I actually don't know anything about my suburb at all. I've been there for 40 years. You should go to the library then, into the archives. That's another way of yeah, you can out go. About, yes, and yeah. it, yes, you can go to the state library. Yeah. You can well, go to, to Google. I, I wanted to. because when we renovated our house recently, um, I went to the library yeah. to find out who had lived yeah. in that house right. because it's an old house. Right, and right. that is a service yeah. that we actually offer through yeah. the Unley Museum yeah. as well. And many people do. They walk through. They've got one of those, you know, turn of the century, 1900s kind of villas or mm. whatever it is, mm. and yeah. they come in and they go, oh, I'd love to hear the story about that, who lived yeah. here. Yeah, and particularly because you know. City of Unley was one of the third constituted local governments. Didn't know that. Yeah, one of the you know it's one of the oldest cities. Yeah. Yes. In South Australia. Outside of the Adelaide. And so because we're close, yes, for viewers mm. outside yeah. of South Australia, mm. because we're only just south of the just the, the, the city. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're four kilometres away from the city centre. Mm. Is that obviously people wanted to settle okay. there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Matthew, we could chatter on about this forever because these are really interesting subjects. So thank you so yes. much for sharing your Fantastic. time with us. Thank you. Thank you. And if you get a chance to have a look at one of these apps, wherever, do it. Uh, <laughs> if you want to find out more, uh, this website will tell you where to go and what to look for. Uh, and we'll be back with the lovely Kimberly in just a moment. Join us then. Yes. Now what? Is you had something with your heart? You've got a problem, have you? It's you. Oh, Malcolm. <laughs> Honestly. Every time I see you. Oh, stop it. I'm a happily married woman, I have to tell you. Well, I'm glad of that. <laughs> because Kimberly's here. Hello, Kimberly. <laughs> Don't look Ba-boom. at me. Ba-boom. And you're oh, a happily no, married woman too. Me. I'm Ba-boom. sorry. Oh, Two disappointments in a night. No, no. luck here. No, no. <laughs> at least okay. it's still ticking, OK? Yes. Yes. This is a good thing. I think it is, yes. yes. And how do we keep our heart healthy and ticking as it should? Good question. We well, should explain who you are. Who are you? <laughs> I, I am a nutritionist. Fabulous. Okay. That's... So how do we feed our heart? Okay. Well, With first love. of all, we have lots of heart issues happening more and more. Mm. Now, part of that is also we're living longer. And because we're living longer, I think people, you know, 50, 100 years ago only lived to their 50s or 60s. <coughs> and we're now getting much longer extended time. So the body body's wearing out. I know, I'm at that age. So unfortunately, men don't have that great of stats. You're looking at one in two heart or some sort of cardiovascular event, whereas women are one in every three. So we're talking about stroke, heart attack, clots. So there's a couple of things you really do need to look at. First of all, family history. If it's in your family line, you have to stay on it. You can't be carrying extra weight. You can't be doing no exercise. You can't be parked out the front of the donut shop and you can't be in the (laughs) drive-thru. It's going to catch you. Every day. All the time. That's right. And and not even a couple of times a week, you know. But, uh, Kimberly, the two things that seem to come across are the fats and the carbs that are obviously coming from flour. Sure. Um, and obviously from cooking fat, whatever, In oils. oils. Um, and butter. Is it palm oil? Sure. Palm oil is a bit of a worry, isn't it? Yeah, look, there's two schools of thought around all of this because we've been we've been sold this watch your fat, watch your cholesterol, watch your fat, watch your cholesterol for 50 mm. years. I've been watching mine for quite some time. <laughs> and yet we know now that there is also a massive link between carbohydrate, carbohydrate uh, ingestion, which is your rice, pasta, potatoes, starchy things, sugar, cakes, the good stuff too, the overproduction of insulin and atherosclerosis and heart disease, elevated blood pressure and elevated cholesterol. So when we've been told to reduce our salt, reduce our fat, reduce all of that for years, we've actually found we've still had people having heart attacks, clogged Mm. arteries, and it hasn't worked. So the new line of thinking is, without a doubt, uh, lots of vegetables, lots of salad, lean meats, eggs, nuts, and keeping carbohydrate down. So if you want, 
if I had to pull a diet out of somewhere that someone could Google and leave this show tonight and go, what do I do? Mediterranean diet. The good old Mediterranean diet, the Greek and Italian where they do lean meats, mm. they do fish, they do nuts, they do eggs, they have lots of salad, lots of vegetable, is a good starting base. And what, no donuts, no really. hamburgers. They are sometimes no food. Chips. You know, we tell the kids <laughs> treat in school yourself they're treats, they're sometimes foods. Mm. But, you know, people start having a cake or a biscuit every day with their coffee and yes, their, their chocolate downfall. every night. And you do have to watch. So cholesterol is okay, it just depends on your parameters. You know, it used to be that you were in the fives, you're okay. And now they're sort of saying, you know, if you're 5.8 or nine, you're not. It's all about your HDL and your LDL balance. They're your goodies and your baddies. Mm, mm. So it depends on your doctor looking at your cholesterol for your family history, for your level of exercise, for what your diet is. And you know, you've got to be going to someone who can look at all of that. Is it wise for people to ask their doctor for the actual printout from a blood test? Sure. But once again, you need to know what you're looking sure. at. Mm. Yep. Um, but if you're really interested, uh, Dr Google can always tell you a little bit oh, of that information. Absolutely, it does. But it is only a little bit of that information because you mm. really need a professional to interpret it Correct. for you. But, I, you know, I just wonder, we've all been sort of brought up with our parents in our age group, I would say, seeing particularly doctors as mm. being gods who you're going to be all right and touch you and you're mm. fine. Mm. But they don't really take a responsibility for care, your own care of things that we're talking about now, like diet. diet. Well, that's why you Rest. have specialists, because yes. doctors really, there's so much pressure on them. They are a referral service. And so that's why there's all the other ologists and things like that. You don't ask a dermatologist to deliver a baby. So you don't really ask, oh, you know, you a doctor. You might have to if, to if ha it's their baby. Well, <laughs> you could. <laughs> no. You'd hope not. <laughs> but, you know, if you, if you have some really pressing nutritional questions, it's unfair to expect a doctor in a 10 minute time slot to work out a fat loss and exercise oh, of and all of that. So yes. that's why it's really... But also really... to give you a pill to get rid of it too. That's right. Yeah. And so we now know that there, and everybody knows there are links with statin drugs, with ongoing uh, medical problems as well. We know there's increased risk of things like Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, there's a lot of things, basic things like peripheral neuropathy, pins and needles. So, you know, we're pretty busy with people saying, I know I have a cholesterol problem. I know there's an option of statins but saying to their doctor can you give me three months can you give me you know four months to change my diet drop five kilo if I can get to someone who can help me do this would you give me three months grace and very happy if it doesn't work if you've got familial cholesterol or genetic cholesterol where you may need help with medication but it is time for people to step up and take responsibility you know it's very easy to take something for your blood pressure and something for your waterworks and something mm. for your cholesterol and something for... Isn't that just yeah. like building blocks that are eventually going to crumble? It, it is, and they all have side effects. There is mm. a drug sheet that comes with a medication. Mm. So there are natural things that you can do. So Is it all diet-related, though, or is it is it taking extra um, vitamins and minerals, which we've talked about a lot over the years, mm. the fact that so many uh, vitamins and mineral uh, supplements are synthetic and you're not really getting sure. the real thing, but you've got to eat Great. a ton of lettuce to get, mm -hmm. you know, that whatever. It, it is confusing, I think, to people to know sure. where do I begin? Is it really just seeing somebody to help you? Yes, because everyone is different. Yep. So you are going to have people, it doesn't matter if they fasted for 30 days, their cholesterol will still be up. So there are people who, no matter what they do, they do need help. And it's I can, just the way your It's just the working. way, and it's done that through their whole family history. Yep. But they're few and far between. You know, there's a lot of people that, it's in my family line. My dad had high cholesterol. Well, your dad also ate donuts and didn't look after his body and worked in the factory and mm. ate the you know trades people who do a lot of pies pasties sausage rolls you know that a lot of bakery items carry five ten kilo in front mm. well it's also alcoholic drinks too if you're drinking sure a lot is. of beer or wine mm -hmm. you're really having another meal on top of the meal mm. yeah that's when you right think about it. so there is lifestyle change dietary change there is exercise there is also changing your drinking habits just those three alone is where you're going to start then there's natural supplements that you can look at as well for example, the liver 
every single day makes approximately 1200 milligrams of cholesterol and shoots it out into your bloodstream. We use it to make digestive enzymes, bile, we use it to uh, for our brain, we use it to make our hormones and a whole lot of other things. And then what our body doesn't use as leftovers comes around to the liver and is processed. So many, many people with a elevated cholesterol that have compromised liver detoxification pathways. So doing a liver detox. Do you remember 20 years ago, Sandra Cabot's liver oh, cleansing there was a lot diet? Of them, weren't there? Yeah. A lot of lemon and lemon. Yeah. Like that. And so cane we got pepper or something. We got, oh, that's right. Cane, yeah, pepper, cane and lemon pepper. or something. Yeah. So we've got much better things you can take now. But just doing a liver cleanse can enable the body to manufacture and then eliminate cholesterol. So that's another option. Then we've got things like coenzyme Q10. Uh, coenzyme Q10 is an enzyme and it uh, is fabulous for protection of the heart muscle, of keeping your arteries nice and uh, not rigid, so elastic, so they will move with your blood and flow. Say that again, what's it called? So it's coenzyme Q10. And when did, where do we get that from? So coenzyme Q10 is an enzyme, you can get it in some foods, but we absolutely know that coenzyme also helps energy in the cell. It also is great for after chronic fatigue, but it's very good for also anti, if you're on a cholesterol medication, negating side effects. Right. But is that found in a food source? Not in a lot of foods. Okay. So that's a supplement. It really is a supplement that you can ask at a chemist or pharmacy. If you're on a statin drug, you must be on a coenzyme. But right. even with a cholesterol problem, coenzyme will help. What right. about having a warm, like my grandfather swore by this. Every morning he would have a hot glass of water with a squeeze of lemon. Fantastic. So that gets... What does it do? It breaks your fast. So the first thing it does is triggers the gallbladder to produce some bile and move through. So it gets your digestive juices going, encourages digestive enzymes. Great thing to do. Your dentist won't like you very much no. because it uh, can the, take the enamel. Mm. So one thing you can do is drink it with a straw. Yeah. And then you bypass that and immediately rinse your mouth out afterwards. Yeah. Food doesn't last that long in my mouth. It's already <laughs> <boom> gone. <laughs> um, both of us don't have a gallbladder anymore. That's right. So how does that work? Because obviously the, the bile isn't sitting there in a mm. bladder ready to be released. Is it released from the... Uh, from the uh, liver. Yes, so the liver just does the compensate and can compensate for that gland being gone. Okay. But you do need to adapt your diet. We can all say, I can eat anything. But really, if you are missing an organ, you need to look at adapting your diet and, and being lower in fat. So I can eat fat quite well, but I can't eat cream. That is one oh, thing okay. that gets me. I can eat cream. Actually, I, I don't think anything's changed with me. Uh, I think I sort of eat everything I sure. ate before, but I'm yeah. not a great eater of those sorts of things mm, anyway, sure. butter or cream, so it hasn't really affected me, I guess. Mm. No, there you go. So you, if you lose a gland, you'd usually need to adjust something accordingly. Okay, stay with us for one tick, because we'll be back we will. in a minute. You know, if you're watching this program, it's in South Australia at 2.30 in the morning, you might be feeling exhausted because <laughs> that's one of the times we go to air here in South Australia. Uh, and in the eastern states, we have uh, morning shows and an afternoon Ooh. show. Ooh. We might be watching us online because you have, I was going to say amnesia. <laughs> that's not what I meant. Insomnia. Uh, insomnia. Thank you very much. <laughs> But we were talking before about having coffee, yes. too much coffee, but people use that to stay awake too. They do. So if you can't sleep at night, you really need to be stopping all caffeine beverages or food, including chocolate, by four o'clock in the afternoon. <gasps> Heavens! That includes your dark chocolate that you're having with your cup of tea in the evening. Mm -hmm. You've got to stop it if you can't sleep. What about alcohol? Yeah, you that know, glass of wine. Then glass of wine, or some have a little toddy off before bed, a little uh, port or something. Yeah, yeah. a little ship. Any value? Absolutely. You can give it a go and you can try it. But, uh, so this is just trying a few things and we'll send you off into happy land. That's right. Or warm, a slab of turkey. A slab, a slab of, turkey of turkey or a warm yes. cup of milk or yes. some cheese and crackers. There you cheese go. Crackers. I often do cheese. I love cheese and crackers. Yes. Well, but then that's not good for your cholesterol, if you have too much cheese. Cheese and gherkins. No, no. Mm. You can have a little bit. A okay. little bit's okay. 
Just a little bit. Well, we hope you've learnt something in this episode of Our Time and we hope you're happy from what you've heard. Kimberly, thank you once again. Yes, so, love having you on. Thanks. Yeah, it's great because you seem to know, every, I don't know how you remember everything. No, I know. <laughs> I can't remember who I am after time. <laughs> who are you? What are we doing here? <laughs> Stop what, it. Who are you? Yes. <laughs> Is it time to say goodbye? It must be. Thanks for joining us and we hope that you keep yourself nice until next time. Stay Janice says. Stay well. Stay well and look after yourself too. Thank Bye. you. I will. Bye.